Hey everybody, Carl Schroof here from GreenSock, and today I want to talk to you about some new features of Morph SVG plugin that are going to help you get the best performance out of this tool. Now, 99% of the time, you're not going to need to tap into these features, but when you have a super complex SVG or you're running your animation on some low-powered hardware, you're going to see that these new features are going to make a world of difference. To illustrate these new features, I'm going to use this very basic demo that has an SVG with a happy face and an angry face, and we're going to morph the angry face into the happy face. Now for an animation this simple, we really wouldn't need these performance optimizations, but it's a great example that allows us to focus on exactly what needs to be done. So the main issue when we're talking about performance with Morph SVG plugin is that on the first render of every Morph SVG tween, there's a ton of calculations that need to happen. So if you have a very complex SVG with a lot of path segments, uh, it can be very processor intensive to make all the calculations while these tweens are attempting to run. I'm going to give you a brief overview of all the calculations that Morph SVG plugin has to do and show you how we can do them in advance of your tweens running. All right. So the first thing Morph SVG plugin has to do is it has to look at this path information inside your SVG and convert all of that to cubic beziers. All right. The next thing it needs to do is match up path segments in the start shape and the end shape. So for instance, it needs to know that the mouth in the angry face is going to map to the ma mouth in the happy face, okay? And basically it does this based on size and position. It also has to see if there are more segments in the first shape than in the second shape or vice versa. And in the case of my angry face here, you'll notice that we have eyebrows in the angry face, but no eyebrows in the happy face. So the plugin needs to say, okay, I need to fabricate some additional shapes in the end shape so that we can have this smooth morphing here. So it looks as if the eyebrows are morphing into the eyes here. Next, the plugin has to figure out a way to deal with paths that have mismatching numbers of points, okay? So there's some tools out there that allow you to morph SVGs, but they require that the start shape and end shape have the same number of points. Well, with morph SVG, um, that's not the case. You'll notice that my angry face has a lot of points in the mouth, but the happy face probably only has three for this path. So we literally have to take the happy smile and add some points so that we get this smooth transition of the jaggedy angry mouth to the smooth curved happy mouth. Next, the plugin needs to find the best shape index. I'm going to switch over to my JavaScript panel and we talked in a previous video about how the shape index allows us to specify which point in the starting path is going to map to the first point in the ending path, okay? And to help us visualize this and find the best shape index, I talked about how the find shape index tool is going to give us a visualization of which shape index is being used. So using a value of auto, you'll see that we pick a shape index of zero, and this animation looks exactly how we want it. But if I change the shape index to one, you'll see that this point here maps to the first point in the ending shape, and that gives us some funky results, okay? So as I go through these other options, none of them are as good as auto. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, is that finding this shape index takes work, and that work happens on the first render of the tween. So what we're going to do is show you how we can figure out the best shape index in advance, okay? So let's assume we didn't have access to the find shape index tool, and we were using a shape index of auto. You know, when we were developing Morph SVG plugin and playing around with animations, we thought to ourselves, wouldn't it be great to know what value auto was returning to us? So we put a little hook inside of Morph SVG plugin that we're going to let you guys use. I'm going to change the value of auto to log. I'm going to hit run. And now let me just jump over to my JavaScript console. And you'll see that when that tween runs, I get this string of shape index values. Now, it's important to note that the shape index can have multiple values when there's multiple path segments. So what I'm going to do is take this number here, this array of numbers, and I'm going to put it inside of an array inside of my shape index value. So what happens now is the next time this tween runs, it no longer has to configure the shape index on the fly. I'm giving it the proper shape index and saving it that work. And in case you're curious about what I mean by multiple path segments, let's go over to our HTML so we can see the SVG. 
And when I'm talking about multiple segments, I'm talking about wherever there's an M or move to command inside of my code, all right? So wherever we have this capital M, that means that we're actually moving to a new point in the SVG before drawing a new path, which gives us multiple segments. So uh, the smiley face or the happy face is one path with a segment for the outer circle, the eyes, and the mouth, okay? Multiple segments, which means that our shape index is going to give us multiple shape indexes for each segment there. Now, um, a simpler animation where I'm just animating a circle into a hippo, where there's only one path segment, if I use shape index log, that's going to give me just one value of 47. So if I put in the value of 47 here, again, that saves me the calculations at runtime, trying to figure out that auto shape index. Now, in addition to just getting the shape index, I can actually pre-compile all of the path data that I need for the starting and ending shape, okay? Morpheus VG plugin is going to do all of its magic of matching up all the starting and ending points, figuring out which ones need to animate, which ones don't, figure out which path segments map to each other, and do all the conversion of cubic beziers into path data for me behind the scenes um, and up front. So what I'm going to do is say precompile, and I'm going to say log, and now when I hit run, I'm going to pop open my JavaScript console one more time, and I get this precompile value, which is an array of two paths, okay? So I'm just going to take this information from my console. I'm going to copy it, and in my code, I'm going to paste it right here, okay? When you precompile, the shape index of auto will be used unless you separately specify a shape index. So what I'm doing is I'm sort of force feeding this morph SVG tween the information that it needs. It doesn't have to search for it. We've already done it. So now when this tween runs for the first time, there's none of that upfront cost of doing all these calculations. Um, a downside is yes, it will make your code a little bit more difficult to read, um, but we suggest that really you only do this when necessary, which is probably going to be rarely, and only do it at the end of your production cycle. So um, once you're happy with your animation style and the timing, uh, then you can run through, precompile where necessary, and add these arrays into your code. So hopefully you'll see some great performance and improvements when necessary by using the shape index log or precompile. Check it out, have some fun. If you have any questions, swing by our forums and we'll be happy to help you.